Here we're continuing with partial fractions and how to integrate using that technique. So let's say we have this in our integral sign and you look at it and go, I have no idea how to do that. Well, it turns out partial fractions can help you here. So we rewrote the fraction. We look at the denominator and we could, looks like that is factorable. So let's factor the denominator. So that's x divided by, uh, let's see here, we have an x and an x. The sum is 3, the product is minus 4. That means I need a plus 4 and a minus 1 because I multiply, I get a minus 1 plus 4, that's a plus 3, and multiply, I get minus 4. So that looks good. All right, so now I recognize this, that as the denominator having a product of linear factors. And so the technique is, ah, that means that I can write this as a constant a over the first factor, x plus 4, and the constant b over the second factor, x minus 1. And of course, they're added together like that. So if I can write this like that, then it's a lot easier to integrate, and I don't have to worry about something like that. Okay, now the question is, what is a and b equal to? How do you figure that out? Well, the first thing we want to do is rewrite these so that they have the same denominator as what we have here. So what I need to do here, and actually what I should have done, is give myself a little bit more room. So I just thought of a better way to do this. So plus uh, b over uh, x minus 1. So let me use a different color. It makes it easier to see. So what do I need to do to this denominator to make it look like this denominator? Well, I need to multiply it by x minus 1. So multiply this times x minus 1. Of course, if I do that to the denominator, I have to do it to the numerator. And over here, it's same thing. What do I need to do to x minus 1 to make it look like this? Well, multiply times x plus 4. So if I go x plus 4 here, then of course I must also multiply the numerator x plus 4. So now what I can do is I can write that over the same common denominator. So let me rewrite that. So I'm going to bring this down. So x divided by x plus 4 times x minus 1 is equal to, so now since they both have the same denominator and I'm adding, I, I can write this as x plus 4 times x minus 1 in the numerator, I get a times x minus 1 plus b times x plus 4. Okay, now notice if these are equal to each other and this denominator is equal to that denominator, that means x must be equal to that. So that's the conclusion. So therefore, I can conclude that x is equal to a times x minus 1 plus b times x plus 4. And so the question now is, what do a and b have to be equal to in order to make x equal to that? That's the idea. That's how we do that. So let's first multiply this out. So we have x is equal to ax minus a plus bx plus 4b. All right. So let me group things together. So we can say that x is equal to ax plus bx minus a plus 4b. And so x is equal to a plus b times x minus or plus the quantity um, minus a plus 4b. All right, now, now I think we can see what we can do here. If x is equal to this, notice that, of course, we have a coefficient of 1 in front of the x. So if 1x equals this, that means 1 must equal a plus b. So we can say that 1 equals a plus b. And since there's no corresponding term on the left side to equate this, we can therefore say that 0 is equal to minus a plus 4b. And that's how we end up with two equations and two unknowns, a and b, that we can solve simultaneously. So again, notice that this is like basically 1x plus 0 equals a plus bx plus this. So therefore, 1 equals a plus b, and the 0 equals this term right there. All right, so now let's solve for a and b using these two equations simultaneously. I think the first thing I would like to do is solve this for a in terms of b and then plug that into the other equations. So we're going to use the method of substitution there. So in the denominator, I can say that a is equal to 4b simply by moving the negative a to the left side. And then I can substitute that in here, which means that this equation now becomes 1 equals. So instead of a, I'm going to write a, what uh, a is equal to in terms of b, which is 4b. So 1 equals 4b plus b, which means 1 is equal to 5b, which means b is equal to 1 over 5. So now I've found one of my two constants, b. Now all I have to do is plug 
that value back in here, and I can solve for a. So a is equal to 4 times what b is equal to, which is 1 over 5, and therefore a is equal to 4 over 5. So now I have the two constants a and b. Now I can go right back to my initial equation where we had, of course, I want to get rid of the red here, so let me rewrite this here. So we had x divided by uh, x plus 4 times x minus 1, which of course was equal to what's inside the integral sign right here. And I can write that equal to a over x plus 4 plus b over x minus 1. And now that I know what a and b are equal to, I can then say, well, that this is equal to a, which is 4 fifths, so 4 fifths over x plus 4 plus b, which is 1 fifth, over x minus 1, which means I can now take this integral right here, which I don't know how to integrate, and replace that by two integrals, where this will be inside each of the two integrals, which is easier to integrate. So in other words, I can now write this, oh, this is equal to the integral of 4 fifths divided by x plus 4 dx plus the integral of 1 fifth divided by x minus 1 dx. And then, of course, we would integrate that, which I will show how to do that later in some later videos. What I want to do first is show examples of each of the five techniques of how to take something that's hard to integrate and make it into something that therefore would be easy to integrate using the technique of partial fractions. So this is our first example. We'll do all the other examples, a total of five, and then I'll show you how to do some integrals using these various techniques of course, the whole idea then, again, is to recognize, well, which technique should I use for this particular problem, or which technique do I use for that problem? So here, let's systematically go through each of the five techniques so you can see, okay, that's how we do that one, and then we'll try to apply it to some real problems to see how we would apply this, these techniques. All right, there you go. That's our first case. Four more to go.